right, so, so it, and it pulls it, it pulls it off. And we got to get a uh, yeah, on yeah. That's like a uh, well, you can use a wrench. Oh, it's actually a thirteen. Thirteen or half inch. All right. So one of the tricks is once that starts to pull off there, you may be able to just smack that with a hammer, okay. with a dead blow, and sometimes it'll come off. So when you have when you grab the hammer, a lot of people don't know how to use a hammer. So when you grab the hammer, you grab it by the handle and not from up high. So you want to maximize. It's just like the uh, the carnival games, where you see the guys hit the hit the bell and then it goes all the way up, and you see the small uh, the small guy has a better technique and comes up and knocks the thing all the way, you know, all the way up and wins the prize over as opposed to the big guy. He's always holding it, yeah. Because the, yeah, the technique is that you want to grab it and you want to, right? We may have to use the puller, but that's how you. Yeah. That's how you would use it. So it's yeah. this is a small enough puller. So you want to get inside. the side. Got that. Got the lock. Very and nice. there you go. So there is no need for you to remove the caliper or anything. All that stays stays in place because the uh, the it's it's so well engineered uh, the, the ultras and the thunders and just the Dualtron products in general that they actually give you access on the side that you take the take the control arm off. So it's actually it's just a really 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 good design that works really well in terms of being user friendly to to remove the stuff cuz I can I can literally do this on the street. If I got a flat on the street and I had the the inner tube and the tire with me, I can I can literally replace it on the street as long as I had off the curb. It's it's literally that that, and all that this, simple. All this shit right here. See this? Yeah, no, so I re I repair the threads every every okay. time. So I repair it and then I'll show you show you that and get all the gook out of it. And uh, is the next step to remove the split rim on this thing? How does this come? What do we do next? Uh, yeah, the next step is. You go in there. Oh, that was really loose. <laughs> Super loose. Send the roll around. Yeah. Now that you've broken that off of there. Get it off there. Oh, stop it, eh? Why, like, also, like, 
Okay, so the difference between the, uh, the V1s and the V2s is that on the V1s, the rim is affixed to the body, to the, to the motor body. Oh, I see, yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. So on the, on the Unlike V. Unlike that right there, right? See right there? Yeah, so what happens is, is that that's a great example. Even though that's a Thunder, these Thunder uh, motors come on the V2 Ultras. Right, so this is what I have on my V2. Yeah, so on the V2, cool. that's what you have. So that, so that, and the difference between the, the, the two is a is basically see how the see how the rim is one piece. Yeah. You get an inner and an outer. This is this is a one piece wheel. It's not split, right? This is on the on the V2s. This is removable. It comes off, and even though the rim is split, you can still remove both I get pieces. It. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So, right. so they're using Thunder motors on the Ultra V2. Right. Okay. Let's keep going. Right. Is uh, first of all clean it up, make sure everything's good. I've got steel wool here. I'll go through it. Clean all that. The bead. You want to make sure that everything seats correctly. What's the bead? You mentioned that a few times before. The bead. The bead. Yeah. The, okay. So the bead on the tire. This is the bead here, right? This, okay. this, this piece here. Okay. So you want to make sure that that, that that seats and that there's no, no debris or there's no, you know, filings or anything that can, that can possibly puncture or go into the inner tube. Right? A lot or, of guys get fucking punctured because they got something wrong in there. I know that. Yeah. So basically what I do, it's just rule of thumb. And this is what I do with everything. I take steel wool, zero, 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 one. It doesn't have to be an, an aggressive steel wool. And I just, I, I go around it. It doesn't have to be polished to perfection. It's just to, to take off the burrs, if there are any, from the uh, from the removal. All right, deep burr. And I use uh, alcohol. Oh, that's where all the rubbing alcohol, man. You know. I don't find this shit in stores anymore. <laughs> and again, there's no need to take off the, uh, when you're doing a tire replacement, there's no need to take off the rotor. Oh, okay. The caliper, the or caliper, any of that yeah. stuff. I don't know why I was taking the caliper off. I'm just used to doing it. I've done the brake test so many times. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, it's not. It's not necessary. You just want to make sure that that's good and good and clean. Yeah. And you're gonna wipe that with a uh, with a towel. It's a lot of fucking oil. A lot of dirt. Yeah. Well, I mean, it builds up in there. You got a lot of heat. Uh, a lot of expansion uh, inside that uh, that tire, even brand new, isn't isn't really clean. There's mold releases, all kind of stuff in there. Okay, I'm gonna take that. And that steel wool, basically, it'll it'll take it'll take all those all that little, little burrs off and stuff like that, and get it nice and. You know, nice and clean. All right. The mating surfaces where the rims come together. You always want to make sure that this is that this is nice and clean. And the reason why is because if there's a high spot on there, even though you're gonna you're gonna torque, you have a torque value on there. If there's something in there that's creating a higher gap, you'll get an oscillation or a wobble in the tire. So it's just it's imperative that you clean that surface here and here. Just to make sure that uh, that everything is smooth and, and everything is good. All right. Clean it. Rag and clean that off. And that way you remove any debris out of there. Just to ensure that the uh, that the pieces. All right, good. Okay, so now we see that that's good. It's 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 good and clean. There's no doesn't appear to be any more burrs on there or anything like that. Get on that. Now we can pretty much say that the uh, that the. Those mating surfaces are good. And here we're gonna take our dental pick. We're gonna make sure that we're gonna get all that little debris out of there. 
because it too is a mating surface and those mating surfaces have to be true. We want to take, come over here. And make sure that it's good. Okay, so, so this tool here is called, it's called a die, okay? The other version of this is called a tap. But the dies are for male threads and the, and the, the, uh, the tap is for female threads. Okay, so if you notice all that debris in there, so what happens is we're gonna take that and we're gonna run that. And this is, this is a certain, it's, it's for a certain size and it's also for a certain thread pitch. The pitch is the separation on the threads and they're all different. So this is a metric. We know the scooter is, is, uh, is from overseas. So we're gonna, so we're gonna use metric. Um, this is a 12 millimeter shaft and this is a, 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 a 1.25 thread pitch. So we have, so that we know we have the correct, the correct thread pitch. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go, we're gonna screw that on there like that. And then as we turn it, we're cutting, essentially cutting new threads and removing all of that old, all of that, that, uh, that Loctite that was in there because you want that, you want that bolt to go on there really good. And then we're gonna use fresh Loctite when we put it back on, red. Red is permanent. Um, it does need heat to, to be removed, however, um, if you have enough leverage on it, you can you can remove it no problem, um, which is what we do here. Um, there's no need to, to, to heat it up, at least not at this capacity, because we have the tools that can to where we can remove it. Okay. Run it in a couple of times. Back and forth. All right, I'm gonna take the brush, just remove all the little debris, the thread, once I cut. So now that it's all nice and neat, nice and neat. Okay, so we're not gonna we're not gonna lube that. We're not gonna put any lubrication on that. And the reason why is because we're gonna use Loctite, and threads have to be clean and dry. Okay. If we're using lubrication on that, then that kind of defeats that that uh, that method on how on how we uh, on how we go about it. Never put it toward the brakes. Never ever use lubrication near or around the brakes, ever. Okay, so, so the easiest way to determine, if you can't see from the outside, it can be a little difficult. Sometimes you run over stuff and you can't see the tire. So look at the inside of the tire. Make sure you have a well-lit place and then look on the inside of the tire and see if there's any protrusions, any nails, any staples, any glass coming from the outside in. And in order to do that, sometimes I just, I, I look really good and I just, I run my fingers in there and just make sure that you mark uh, like a starting point. You you grab a, grab a point, mark with your hand, and then just just go through. No special equipment needed. I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Nope. Nope. Yep. Oh my god. Got a staple in it. Do you have a spare tire here? Because I mean, oh, did I bring one? No, 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 no. I could just pull that out and then use the same tire. Because remember, see. you got an inner tube. Let me see. 
exactly why I say do it. Right here. Run your finger right there. Be careful. Is that? Oh, that's why this tire. Oh, maybe the tube is good. No, there was something wrong with this tire. Obviously, the tube I, I know. didn't puncture the tube. I'm getting confused. Yeah, okay. So, so. Oh, that's if this... when the other tire got. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Got... Oh, okay. So, this is You're good that you got this. this. You're going to be able to save this? Yeah. So, what happens is, is that this, this tire is still good. So, even though, you know, you're like, oh, man, it's. The tire is still good because remember it's a split rim so so that came through and that's exactly it just proved so imagine if i had put the tire in that inflated it it would have punctured it how are you going to pull that out okay so uh so we uh we'll either use needle nose or we'll use something that we can get in there with to, to, to pull it out yeah you go ahead and do it it's going to be hard for the camera to pick up so It. There we go. Oh, so it wasn't all the way through. It, it doesn't need to be. Oh my God, this is why. So this, so this is a used tire that I had where the tube got was frequently punctured. I just dropped that piece of metal. It's gone. All right, anyhow. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, I'll keep looking. Make sure there's no broken else in there. Yeah, that's what I'm doing that's now. That's why I probably this is comes off a tire that I got a flat on. So that wasn't like a nail through the tire. That was just a shard. It's just a fucking piece of metal in there. Yeah. That's so crazy. basically, okay, so you fucking check that out. And where yeah. did you check that out? Yeah, so this is this technique is necessary. Okay, so if somebody tells me, oh, they got a flat and they got an inner tube in there, I'm either looking to see if it's an, a tire inflation issue, because a lot of times if the tire, because because these wheels are so torquey, if you if you if you run that that motor and you're on three and you gun it and the tire's low, and remember the the this is at an affixed position, right? So what happens is. That that uh, that valve comes through there, and it'll spin the tire on the rim and break it off at the at the. Uh... What's the next thing? So we're gonna reuse my old tube. There's nothing wrong with the tube. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the tube. Tubes tubes can be reused. Nice. No problem. You have slime in this thing or not? I don't think so. But if you're if you're having trouble getting it, then maybe it is. No. I don't think so though. I don't remember putting slime in it. <laughs> Two fingers, baby. Two. So we'll, uh, we'll use that. We'll get the liners. So you want you want coverage. Okay, cool. Like that. So that's what you're gonna get. There's a barrier between the the inside nice. of the tire. Nice. Yeah, and these these are really tough. Really, really, really tough. Thirty one inches. Good. So at recall, we go through first class memory implants. <laughs> <laughs> you, really, you really know that movie, huh? All the fucking movies to really know. You just wedge that shit in there? Yeah, okay, so, so basically you want to take the uh, the ribbed portion, okay, of this particular brand. Some of them are smooth, some of them are not. But the ribbed portion goes toward the, uh, goes goes down, okay? okay? And when you when you put it, you want to put it in the direction of the uh, of the tire. So if you're, if you're spinning the tire forward, you want to put you want to put the bottom in first, and first you want to get the right the correct width. You have to have the correct width. Yeah, so you put it in there, but you see how there's there's very there's a little overlap, right? Just a little bit of overlap, and then and then you want that, okay? You don't want it to be to barely. Right. Right, because as the, as the fluctuation change, you know, changes inside the tire, but you don't want it to where it's just boom, 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 boom. you don't want too much of that. Okay. So just just enough to to, to, to to have it over, right? That, and we're gonna we're gonna take that air out of there, and we're gonna watch that slime ooze out of there, maybe. fit now what we're gonna do is we're gonna inflate that to make sure that it's not pinched okay. and then we're gonna use wax to make sure that it doesn't pinch once we put it on the rim okay so you 
see how that's in there like that? Okay, so we're gonna take that. Just a little bit, but we do want it to, to be inflated a little bit. All right? Take that, put that on, like that. So here I have a, a lube. That's stick. what she said. <laughs> and after we inflate that, we're gonna put that on there just a little bit. And this is, this is will pretty much ensure that you don't pinch that that inner tube, putting it back on there, which which happens quite commonly. And if you if you pinch it, it'll be short lived. Yeah. And you know, so it's just it's just basically and on there shortly. And this is not glue, this is wax. It's like a wax or a lubricant stick. Clean this up a little bit. This is the other half of the rim. We're gonna also make sure that there's no burrs. Together, they'll kill another dog. I thought it was like gangsters. Yeah. <laughs> I tell them they want to get out of the hood. They're like, no, we don't here. <laughs> you know, you ask them, I don't, huh? I don't really you know, you don't fucking like, ask them? I live in a very slow part of Hollywood, I feel like. Some <laughs> Hollywood tradition, but it's pretty nice. Right, here we go. Nice. Putting it back on there. You want to align those. So I just want to remind everybody that you always use, I use new hardware whenever I do this. One and you skip one. Oh really? Yeah. I never that's a little trick. Two. Three. Go flat as that if I pinched it. 